Hi guys, so this is your Highway of Tears video. So the Highway of Tears is a highway called Highway 16 or Yellowhead Trail. It goes through almost all of Canada except for the islands. It goes all the way into BC and BC is the primary area we're seeing a lot of this happen. A book was just released called The Highway of Tears and if your parents maybe bought the book you might want to read parts of it or the whole thing because it's very important to your guys' history and problems that you guys are facing today. And it also has solutions and allies and do all sorts of information. It was one of the greatest reads I've, the greatest books I've read in a long time. But the primary thing is um, that they wanted to discuss in this book is that there are huge racial issues within missing women. So as a white person, if somebody in my family were to report me missing, it's very likely the RCMP would take it seriously right away and they would start searching even before any 48 hour period to make sure like I wasn't just um, like on a trip and didn't tell anybody or wasn't hiding with one of my friends. However, with Aboriginal women, very often they wait the 48 hours because they think that they're just out partying or they got drunk somewhere and they'll be back. Yeah, yeah. You know what? When people go missing, sometimes they come back within 48 hours. But we also know that the first 48 hours is the best time to solve a crime. If you're going to solve a crime, most of them are solved within the first 48 hours. So by not listening to reports and not taking reports seriously, we are discriminating and being very racist. The RCMP is known to be like this for several different reasons. First of all, the RCMP, when they first get their posting, they are moved to a city or a town that they've never been before. They don't know anybody. They don't have any cultural reference to it. They're just put there. And once they work there for one or two years, they get to move to another place that they actually want to go to. And all those case files aren't always shuffled to the next person properly. Usually they're just shuffled under a desk and left to be cold cases. Which means if they are trying to find a missing woman, she might end up being a cold case. They might lose, and they do lose, a lot of the paperwork and a lot of the evidence. Another issue that occurs is when we say we're going to fund the police, we're going to give them lots of money. Even myself, and I know Landon has brought this up too, we do have to fund the police because they're going to protect us. They're going to serve us. They're going to make sure we stay safe. But most of the funding goes to cities. So if you're funding the police, you're funding, or even the RCMP, the RCMP would be funded better in Stony Plain, Spruce Grove, um, Devon, all the areas around Edmonton. And then Edmonton has its own police force that's funded very, very well. But the RCM RCMP, as you go further and further into the rural areas, into the country areas, they get less of the funding because they have a smaller population. This actually means that some of the most vulnerable populations are First Nations communities. And we know that there's so many issues that require police presence, but they're not getting it because there's no funding to deal with it. On top of that, historically, the RCMP was created to um, assimilate and kidnap Aboriginal people and to keep them on the reserve or kidnap them and put them in residential schools. So historically, there's not a lot of trust with the RCMP. And the RCMP hasn't been given the best knowledge or the best education to help handle First Nation communities. We also know that if you live in a rural area and you don't have a lot of money, sometimes you have to do things that are not the safest. You have to hitchhike to get to town. Your car might break down somewhere and you have to hitchhike to go get gas. Um, you might have to walk more places because you couldn't afford a car. That might mean you're walking down a highway. And the other thing, and this is something that we talk about in Thug, is preconceived notions meaning that you deserve to die. And when we talk about Thug, we talk about Khalil, people believing Khalil deserved to die because he sold drugs. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You can't be charged criminally when you're dead. You're not the one being put on trial. But many of these women 
are put on trial. Things are said like they lived a dangerous life, they were prostitutes, they um, were doing drugs, they were alcoholics. Well, none of that actually matters. We still need to catch whoever killed them. And they need to be treated equally. And the last thing, of course, is basic funding. Sometimes when you are a city person and you're asking for funding to help find a missing woman, you're going to get a lot better funding. People are going to notice more because the media is going to pay attention. Whereas when it's a First Nation person, often the media does not pay attention or does not put that into the proper light. That's not to say that they're lying, but they are omitting facts or they are changing people's view on the story or they just don't print the story. So all of those facts could also go in your 10 sentences. You could say that the media needs to report First Nation crimes and missing murdered women equally with white women. You could say we need better transportation, we need better policing in rural areas, we need equal funding. I don't think it's crazy to say that the RCMP funding across every single RCMP station should be the same. It is not. We also need to make sure that the RCMP with experience and the training to handle missing cases are in those communities. They're not hiding in Vancouver and hiding in Edmonton, but they're actually in First Nation communities or near First Nation communities looking into those areas. Okay? So respond to that in 10 sentences and respond to what you've read 